Okay, good morning, everybody. Let's start the chitas of the day. Today we're holding the first uh, reading of Ezei Sabracha, uh, the last portion of the Torah. Ezei Sabracha, Shabbat Shalom, Yisraelim, and this is the blessing that Moshe Rabbeinu gave the Moshe Rabbeinu, the man of God, gave as Bnei Yisrael to the Jewish people of name Moshe before he died. And as she says, the Zeis and the flame Moshe summon from Misase. Moshe Rabbeinu did it very close to his death. Why? The Yimleach Shem Eimah says the Hillel said because if not now, when? Ayeim and he said Hashem is Sinai Pach. The Lord came from Sinai. The Zadok Misay Lama and he shone forth from the Seir to them. They fear Mahai Paran. He appeared on Mount Paran. Ba'asan and Mivis Kedish, he came, to, he came with the sum of a holy mirror, some of holy mirrors. He mean the age Das Lamai, and his right hand was a fairy law work for them. And as she says, Mesh Rabbi initially in, in, initiates his blessing by praising God, and then he addresses the needs of Israel. That's what this is brought down in the three. The praises which Mesh Rabbi commands and mentions the merits of Israel. All of all this was in a way of consolation, as to say, these people are worthy of blessings. Should rest upon them. Misine ba, one means he came from Sinai. He came out towards them as he, uh, as they stood at the at the foot of the mountain, as a bridegroom goes goes forth to greet his bride, comes out to the chuppah to greet his bride. The Abish, the God, came out to greet the Jewish people. He first shunned from Seir. Why did he come from Seir? Because first God ordered, offered the Torah to the, the people of Seir. It was Asa. And they didn't accept it. I feel ahead to them. And then he brought it to the Jews. But then he went to Har Potter. He went to Har Potter. Who's the Mount Potter now, she says? Because he also offered to the children of Ishmael, who dwelled in Potter. And they didn't accept it. But so then he came to the Jewish people. With God were only some myriads of holy angels, but not all of them, nor even most of them. This is unlike a man of a mortal king who displays his spenders, all his riches, and glory on his wedding day. David's his wedding day, he didn't, he, didn't have to, he, didn't have to, he didn't have to come out with all his, uh, so to say, angels. David doesn't need to have, uh, you know, so be like a regular king who needs to show his glory. So that's what the Pasuk says. They came up with some of them. Age dust. Now she says, a, a law of fury, fire. It's a, it was originally written before God in the letters of black fire upon white. That's what it says. Black upon white, which is actually the way we write the Torah. Black upon white. He gave it to them, but he gave it to them on tablets and scribes as with the right hand. Thus it says, with from his right hand. Another explanation, H does, as the tiger renders it, that he gave them amidst the fire. And the Abishah gave the table to Eden, he gave them amidst the fire. Verse 3, <laughs> indeed you showed love to your people. <laughs> All your holy ones are in your hand, <laughs> and they let themselves be centered at your feet. Yisra bearing your utterance. But as she says, God also displayed great affection to the tribes, each one to whom were known as his people. For only Benjamin was destined to be born. When the Holy One blessed me, he said to Jacob, a nation of multitude of nations shall come into existence. Thus, we see that Benjamin alone was called a nation. A multitude of nations referred to Ephraim and Manasseh. But ultimately, the Abish to call each tribe Av Khaylamin. Every tribe was like a whole nation. All the holy ones are in your hand. This refers to the souls of the righteous, which are hidden away in the God. As to say, as said, but my Lord, so the Lord's soul shall be bound in the bond of life. What does that mean? And Israel worthy of this. Privilege to be their souls hidden away with God because they have placed themselves right in the middle, at the bottom of the mountain, so to say, at God's feet. The word tuku is a passive connection 
Okay, which is meaning his kavu, they allowed themselves to be placed in the middle of the mountain. Yisumadabir Secha, Nasalim El Taylor, they 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 pour upon themselves the yoke of Torah. Go to the next Nashi, the Sashi the a grammar. <coughs> Actually, not next. I call today should be a decha. All righteous, all, all Israel righteous, all Israel is righteous, and good people come to you. They did not turn away from you, and you guarded them. Behave to cool and aglecha. So now she says, and they placed themselves right in the middle of the enter beneath the protective shadow. shadow. And they gladly accepted your decree and your laws. And these, and these were the words, the Torah which Mesha commanded us, is a legacy for the congregation of Jacob. God says, we have taken hold of it, and we will not forsake it. And when the king, God, and the Melech, the sum of total people gathered. Yachat shift the Israel and the tribes of Israel were together. So he Hakadosh Baruch Hu, but he goes on God. We should have melech. Hamid El Malchus Shemayla. The yoke of heaven is always upon them. We saw it at every gathering of Rashi, meaning whatever their numbers gather. Rashi, as, as the verse says, when you take the count of the heads of Israel. These people are worthy that they should be blessed them. Another explanation is the Israel, uh, when, when Jews gather together in a unified group and there's peace amongst them, God is their king. But when there's strife amongst them, that, that, that. May Reuven live and not die. May his people be counted in the number. Rashi says, this one. By Yamas Laila Mabba, you should not die in this world, they should not die in the world to come. Because you lay yiske lay my they should they should not mention when it comes to Ruben the story that happened with him and his father with Billa. May his people be counted in a number. Gosh says, may Ruben be counted amongst the enumerated the rest of his brothers. It's matter that incident with Billa. Should we not exclude Reuven from being counted amongst his brothers? Similarly said, and Reuven went and lay with Bila, and Jacob's sons were 12. Why? Because Reuven did Shuva, as we'd ask you to say in a minute about Yehuda, that Reuven and Yehuda were Bali Shuva, and they repented. And this is what he said to Yehuda Shema Hashem Kel Yehuda, the Lord, and I can to the Yehuda's voice. And bring him to his people. Yod of Rav Leim and his hands do battle for him. And may and may you be helped against his adversaries. So now she says over here that Pasik puts Reuben near Shimon. Near you, I'm sorry, you didn't hear Reuben. Because both of them confessed of wrong they have done. Both of them Bali Chuva. As is written, the wise men have told. To them alone, and no strangers pass between them. This alludes to the confession of Reuben and Yehuda, the what wise men have told, and that they have constantly blessed them here together, them alone. Although Levi was next to Reuben, should have been Reuben Levi. Nevertheless, here the concept of blessing Levi did not come between them. No stranger comes between Reuben and Yehuda, for they were Bali Chuma. Rather, he blessed immediately afterwards. In the next verse, lady, our rabbis first explained that during the entire 40 years that Israel was in the desert, the Yehuda's bones was rolling in his coffin. He couldn't find any peace because the excommunication he accepted upon himself. He was took responsible for you for Benjamin. And it says, I will not bring him to you, I will sin against you all my days. So Mesha Abena says, Who caused Reuben to publicly confess his sin? It was Yehuda. And thus, by placing Yehuda together with Reuben, Moshe alludes to the merit of Yehuda. In effect, may the Lord listen to Yehuda's voice, meaning his prayer that Yehuda's bones would come finally to rest and they would find peace. And that's what happened.
Shema Hashem Kol Yehuda. May God listen to the voice of Yehuda. Over here, Rashi says, Moshe Rabbeinu is talking about the descendants of Yehuda, which is David and Shlomo, and their prayer of Asa when he came to fight the Ethiopians. And you see, and and also Yehoshaphat when he came to fight the Ammonites. The Cheskim to Asmachedim. And Cheskir, when he came to fight in Sredo. Well, now I'm to the other, but as she says, the Shalom de Amrucha, peace from war, Yod of Rav Loi, may his hands fight his battles, and may they exact his vengeance. The Ezer Metzor of Tia, Moshe Rabbein over here is talking about Yashaf, concerning the battle of Ramat Begilah. The shepherd cried out, and the Lord helped him. And here Moshe Rabbeinu prayed, that the Lord, that the Abishah should listen to the praise of Yeshua. Shema Hashem Kol Yehuda. But Rashi says something interesting over here. And we know that Moshe Rabbein does not mention Shimon. Hearing, but here he includes Shimon in his blessings. Here he includes with Yehuda blessing Moshe alludes to incorporate a blessing for Shimon. The allusion here is the word Shema, which is the root for Shimon. So, so also, in accordance to the incorporation of Shimon with Yehuda, they, they divided it so amongst the tribes, Shimon received this portion out of the lot of Yehuda. As scripture states, out of the lot of the children of Yehuda was inheritance of the children of Shimon. Now, why did Moshe not devote a separate blessing for Shimon himself? Because he held against him what he has done in Shittim. Moshe Rabbein was angry with the tribe of Yehuda. What happened in Shittim? Pinchas had to get up and kill Zimri. This was the heads of Shimon and the whole tribe. And Moshe Rabbeinu said, I'm not going to mention this tribe in my blessings. But Moshe Rabbeinu, the lover of Jews, made sure to add him, to allude to him in the word Shema. In the word Shema. And that completes the Chumash for today. We then go to the time of the day where Mila began as HaKadosh to get the letters of the Altadeba. We're holding in the middle of the 23rd letter of the Alter Deba. The Alter Deba again goes back to his the beginning of his letter. That he asked the Jews to learn between Minas and Meir. That every synagogue, when they come together between Minas and Meir, and they have to wait, so to say, there's a period you have to wait, they should learn Ay and Yankif. They should learn the stories of the Gemara, and they should learn Halach. Therefore, my beloved ones, my brethren and friends, do not. Do not commit this evil, this great evil, in turning a gathering of worshippers before or after praying in a company of scoffers. You should learn Torah together. New kavod Hashem alekech. We tell him yes. Give glory to God before it grows dark. And be mincha and That between mincha and ma'ir, call you meisachal every weekday. Little ma'ir ba'asara to make to sit and learn. There shouldn't be just a break where people just get together and talk. They should get together and they should be. They should teach them Siddis, Pnimis Atayda. They should learn the Siddis, Shea Goda and Siddis. Pnimis Atayda, the hidden aspect that can be found in the book of Ayin Yankiv. Sherev Sajdis Atayda Knudzenberg. Because most of the secrets of Atayda are concealed in the Agoda, in the stories of the town, where you'll find the most secrets of the Atayda. Actually, JLI once gave a class in the Agadah. Fascinating stories of the Torah of the, of, 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 of the Gemara. Machaperes Avedi Shalad. And by learning this, it forgives, atones man's sin. Gemuvori Basif Yisif has brought down the writings of the Arizal. And the glory of then the revealed passages in Agadah. In Darki Hashem, they are given, these stories were given to us to show us the ways of God and the way a man ought to walk. And they enable him to take counsel in his soul, in heavenly matters, such as the Torah and mitzvahs, and in worldly matters, as is known, the Chach Meleiv, as is known for the wise of heart, by learning Mishnayas. I'm learning Ayin Yankin, the stories that God of the Torah. It's also, you should also learn a little bit of Shulchan Aruch, the code of Jewish law. Every person should learn. We should learn also together with 10, with the minion, 
a little bit of Kodah Jewish law, Aruch Chaim, which is Aruch uh, Chaim, the law is essential to everybody to, to know, and Tzlich uh, Chodah, what every person needs to know. And on this, our sages say, whoever learns law every day is assured of a life in the world to come. In Lachas Berusim Tzuzalacha, which is the clear learning, clear halacha in Shulchan Aruch, the Maisa of what to do. The Purush Befeidus Rashi has explained the commentary of Rashi, the Feil Lacha of Blessed Memory, that the term halachas refers to the final ruling without the surrounding the debates and arguments. That means you can learn Gemara and we can learn about the, that's debates and arguments of halacha. Then you learn Shulchan Aruch of what to do. This actually explains what Rashi a little earlier in Tractor Megillah, not in the teachings about whoever studies halachas, but in connection to, to the, and the illusory of somebody who used to study halachas. Tractor Nidak comments on this teaching. Rashi states that the term halachas refers to Mishnayis. Mishnayis is the Tereshmapad, it's the Mishnah of Rabbi Yudha Anasi, but Isis and Allah Lamesh Mishnayis, not to which is included in the discussion of the Gemara. Is also in the case in regard to Shulchan Aruch, which is a basic code of Jewish law, what to do and what not to do. The code of Jewish law doesn't talk much about the arguments behind it. The code of Jewish law talks about the basic principles of Jewish law. And that completes the Tanya of the day. My friends, today is the 21st day of the month, and the Tillam for the day is chapter 104 and 105. My friends, the next two days, Monday and Tuesday, is Yontif, Baruch Hashem, is Yontif, we're not going to do chitas together, hopefully you do your chitas on Monday and tomorrow, we continue Zay Sabracha, on Tuesday, actually we read, we finish the whole Zay Sabracha, and we start, we go Tuesday, we do the whole Bereshis from the beginning until, 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 uh, until, uh, until the fourth reading. And on Wednesday, we come together for the fourth reading of Pashas Bereshis. So the next time we come together, Wednesday, we're going to start on the fourth reading of Pashas Bereshis. Wish you all a beautiful day. Today is Hashan and Abba. May God listen to all our prayers and bless us all with a happy, today is the real chsima, the chsima that was the, the, the signing that was supposed to the, the happen in Kippur. Today is the ultimate final sign. May we all be signed and written for a wonderful and beautiful and happy year. A good year. A good year. Mazel, day. Tough, on, mazel tough on speed learning. Yeah, God bless you all. You've got, got it under the wire. Please. Under the wire.